Ooh, 100. Really nice. What's up everyone, it's Mike from Flight Club. In this video, I will be building this beauty. This is the Flight Club Neutron. Uh, the Neutron is basically a baby version of the Proton designed specifically for the smaller 20x20 20 20 components. It's got all the features of the Proton like the mini CNC nucleus plate with the threaded holes for the arms. So when you switch arms, all you do is screw the, the screws right into the plate. There's no need for nuts or anything. Um, and it's got the butter mounts. The butter mounts are custom silicone grommets that help prevent any vibrations from reaching the gyro uh, to ensure a buttery smooth flight. Um, it can do uh, standoff mode or um, hybrid canopy mode. It currently has five arm options. It's got a three inch, four inch, five inch race, five inch practice. The five inch race and practice are the same X arm except the race this is a race has skinnier arms but the practice is just a little bit wider and it's got a 5 inch SX stretch X option also so it can be configured for any type of flying in any situation so let's just quickly go over the parts in this build I'll be using the Emacs Mini Magnum 2 stack the Emacs stack is a 35 amp ESC running via Heli 32 and is rated for up to 6S and it's got a F4 flight controller that has a built-in two of these built-in RGB um, programmable LEDs. Got a built-in buzzer, um, a little place for your receiver, and then it's got a 25 to 200 milliwatt um, VTX with smart audio in this neat little stack. I was very skeptical about using the stack in the beginning, but it's proven to be a tank. I have four neutrons all using the stack and I haven't had a single issue um, except when I messed it up. I did have to replace two ESCs but it was my fault. One of them I burned up an ESC while trying to tune some new motors and the other one I messed up trying to enlarge the M2 hole to an M3. Uh, I think it's this one. Yeah, M3 but uh, I'll get into that later. So honestly, the VTX that comes with the stack isn't that great. Um, you can buy the ESC and flight controller separately, but the price difference in buying the ESC and VTX or the ESC and flight controller separately versus uh, the whole stack is only like four dollars. Um, so I recommend just getting the whole stack. So if you're just flying in the park by yourself, this VTX will do fine. But if you plan on um, racing with other people, I recommend using a different uh, VTX. I use the uni uh, TBS Unify V3. I pretty much use the Unify V3 or the Race in all my builds. They're easy to set up, they're small, has smart audio, and has great video. And then for the camera, I use the Foxer Aero Pro. Uh, this is pretty much my standard camera in all my builds. And they're cheap, tough has fantastic image in uh, daylight or even night if you set it up correctly which I'll show you in the setup later and then for this setup I'm running the TBS uh, Crossfire Nano um, one of the bad things about the Emacs stack is that it doesn't have a spare UART to set up the Crossfire using the Crossfire protocol but you can still use the Crossfire with this stack you just have to use SBUS uh, protocol which um, I'll show you how to do later. Um, the only major advantage that I can think of using the Crossfire on SBUS versus the XM Plus is the range. Um, with the Crossfire, I don't have to worry about any range issues. You can pretty much fly wherever you want. But if you want to set it up with something like an XM Plus, um, you set it up the exact same way. The build and setup and in the build and the setup in Betafly is the same for Crossfire or uh, FR Sky. The Crossfire will just have one extra step in the Tyrannus setup, which I'll show you uh, later. So for the motors, I tried like probably eight sets of motors before I found a configuration that I liked. In this build, I'm using the F42 1700KV for 6S. Um, this build is about 259, 259 grams. Uh, with no props. Um, personally, it's too powerful for me, but if you can handle the speed, it's a great setup. Um, the motor, I'll kind of just go over the motors that I tried. 
So I tried these Lumineer uh, 2206, 2450 uh, Popo motors. Popo is like their little thing that they invented, a uh, quick way to mount props. All you do is put your prop on there, you push this little thing, and the motor just kind of snaps into place on these little balls. Um, on the table, it works great. It's really easy to swap a prop. It just takes like, you know, you can just change a prop just like that. But when you're actually flying, um, I had two motors pop off in two batteries when I was in I.O. So I just ended up putting props, um, a prop nut on here to hold it in. Um, this motor flew great, but I, it didn't even last f like five batteries before I, I hit a gate and the, the bell broke off, the shaft broke off. So um, I don't know. I wanted to like these, but they just didn't work for me. And then I tried these uh, Brother Hobby 2205 20, 25 KV. These motors are good for a, um, a lightweight setup. With this one built on a quad, I have the similar motors here. This one is, um, this olive weight is only like 230 grams. Quad feels too light. Um, it's a great setup for a small technical track, but it lacks speed on uh, big tracks. And also, when you're doing turtle mode, you got to be careful because I burned up like three of these motors in I.O. Um, I guess they don't have the torque to uh, do turtle mode when you're in the grass. And then also tried the uh, T-Motor F40 Pro 2, 2400 kV and 2600 kV. Both great motors um, if you can handle the power. It's too much power for me. And then also tried the Brother Hobby R2 2205 1700, 17, or 2600 kV motors. Um, another great motor, except the 2600 kV was a little bit too inefficient for me. Had great speed, but I was getting... I don't know, under two minute flight times. And then I also tried the Emax RS2 2206 2700 kV. Um, the weight on this one was perfect, but the 2700 kV it was fast, but it was really inefficient. I was getting under two minute flight times on a 1300 pack. I had these, the 2207 2522 kVs. Um, these are the motors that I burned up one of my ESCs because I, I could never get it tuned right. Um, the motor got so hot that it fried one of my ESCs. So um, what I actually settled on for my 4S setup, I used the Emax RS2 2206 2300 kV. This, these motors give me the perfect balance of weight, power, and efficiency. And the all-up weight is only about 250. And with a 1300 pack, I get around uh, four minutes of flight time. I really like low KV motors on 4S because like it's, it's, it's a lot easier to control the power band. You don't have to put a throttle cap on it with some of these like crazy powerful motors. And then for the 6S setup, I used the Brother Hobby R2 2205 1750 kV motors. Uh, this build is about 240 grams uh, all up weight without props. So normally 6S setups are heavier than 4S, but with these R2 motors, they're only about 25 grams or something. Um, it kind of offsets the heavier packs. So or the heavier 6S pack. So this setup has the advantage of a 4S setup being it's light and then it's got the power of a 6S. So this thing flies really well. All right, so enough talking. Let's get to the build. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is prepare the Crossfire Nano to be mounted. So I'm just gonna use the wire that it came with. Just grab a red, black, and uh, I guess a white one for the signal. I like these wires because one side is already pre tinned cut for you. Alright, so I'm just going to put the Nano in this little vise holder. Help me hold the receiver while I solder. So I already pre tinned the, the leads on the crossfire. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the wire on here. Since we're only running uh, S bus, we don't need channel 2, we only need channel 1. So that's the signal. Power ground. Alright, so once that's soldered up, 
I'm gonna go ahead and use this little uh, crossfire mount that was designed. This is actually designed by Mayday FPV. Uh, he's the same guy that designed the uh, the canopies for me. Does a really great job. Anyways, go ahead and thread the antenna through the mount. And then we're gonna mount the antenna kind of backwards. This, and then just kind of turn it back this way. And then get some of the heat shrink that came with the crossfire. And just cut a little piece big enough to cover Go ahead and just shrink up the heat shrink. All right, so before I mount it onto the bottom of the ESC, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the wires for this. Um, I made this little cheat sheet. Um, just to streamline the build because once you'll see that once you have all these wires cut building with this Emacs is just so freaking easy I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the motor I'm gonna cut all the wires and then that way we can just um, solder everything together so for the motors I'm using the 5 inch race so I'm just gonna line up the uh, bell with the bottom line and then cut two for motor one through and four and then two for two and three. So this cheat sheet will come with a kit that I'll have to go along with this build. If you're not use if you don't if you're not building with a kit, you can just kind of eyeball or um, build it the old-fashioned way, trial and error. <laughs> Those are my motor wires, and then I'll go ahead and do the Unified Pro BTX wire goes here. And then go ahead and do the camera while we're at it. Once we get all these cut, the build will go super fast. Alright, so on the camera lead, we're just gonna keep the end with this little connector, and then we'll go we'll remove this purple wire because that's a VSEN that's if you're going to use the um, the camera OSD which we're not because the Emacs flight controller has a built-in Betaflight OSD so we'll just use that so camera alright so I'm going to go ahead and pre-tin all these wires and then uh, we'll continue with the build once you got everything soldered up, it should look like this. You got the Crossfire Nano here with the ground, power, and signal going to channel one. And then the way I mount this antenna is I have this little um, the lead kind of pushed off to the side so you can access the bind button if you need to later. And then uh, once you got that, I'm just gonna get some double-sided tape so we can tape it on the bottom of the ESC. I use this Gorilla Glue stuff because um, it's super strong and it doesn't matter if it's cold outside, it sticks no matter what. Whoops. So I'll just put it on the bottom of the ESC, or I mean the, the RX, and then just peel the stuff away. And then just stick it with the bind button facing up right behind the connector. Like this. Because the way you have it, if you have it set up this way, there's a little hole under the frame that lets you access the, the bind button. Alright, so next we're going to put the frame together. So just grab your nucleus plate and grab some of these butter mounts. And just pinch them and put them through the holes for the flight controller. That. 
All right, so that's what it looks like. All right, so one of the bad things about the Emacs stack is that it uses M2 hardware. Emacs or any other manufacturer, if you're watching this video, stop using M2 hardware. It's such a pain in the butt. There's really no advantage in using the M2 hardware, except maybe you might save a gram in the weight versus a uh, M3, but it's just such a pain in the butt that you have to go buy special hardware to use this M2 um, hardware. So um, the butter mounts are designed for M3, but you can use these M2, but you just have to use um, like a little washer or something. And the little plastic standoffs that come with the, the Magnum are honestly it's trash because I mean anytime you crash you're gonna break those little nylon standoffs so what I do in every single one of my builds is just use one long screw that goes all the way through the stack that way you never have to worry about breaking any standoffs alright so um, the way the Emacs is laid out and the way I'm gonna have the the flight control I mean the VTX setup I'm going to use the M2 by 20 millimeter on the left side of the frame and then M2 by 18 millimeter on the right side and you'll see what I mean later. So I'm just going to grab a little M2 by 20, put a little M2 washer on it. Um, anyways, if you're getting the kit for this, I'll have all this special hardware um, in the kit. But if not, I'll put a link in the description below of uh, this little kit you can get on uh, Amazon that has all this M2 hardware. Um, so this little washer down here will just prevent this the M2 screw head from getting pushed through the, uh, the butter mount. So let's do that. So as you can see, the longer screw... M2, the 20 millimeter screw is on the left and then the 18 is on the right and then just grab an arm on it here grab the top bottom plate sandwich that and then grab a flathead and M3 by 10 flathead and then just screw it right into the threads of the plate That's a good thing about using this uh, nucleus plate. You don't have to use nuts or those press nut thingies that always strip. The CNC plate is threaded, so you just screw it right into the plate. Yeah. All right, so once you get that on, you can go back and tighten them. You don't have to tighten these like crazy tight. Just enough to where the arm is not wobbly. There you go. Alright, so once that's done, we're going to mount the... I think the normal direction for mounting the, um, the Emacs is like this. But if you mount it like this, the, the VTX is actually in the front of the, the board and it's kind of it bumps into the camera. So I like to flip it 180 degrees with the... Um, the caps on the right and we'll fix the the orientation and the motor mapping later in um, beta flight it's really easy I'll show you how to do that so I'm just gonna mount it like that so it'll sit like that but before I do that I'm gonna go ahead and mount the motors so I already cut the wires on here so I'm just gonna mount the motors on All right, so I've got all the mounter, motors mounted on here and um, um, pre tin but I'll just go ahead and show you what I did. I use these Weeha uh, wire strippers. These things are freaking awesome because it has this little screw here where you can like fine tune how big of an opening you want and then you can lock it in. So once you have it adjusted right, you can just lock it in and then just grab this thing and then just strip it off so easily if you do a lot of soldering like I do this this tool is definitely worth its money all right so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-tin this wire all right and then go ahead and ow. 
that was hot. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the ESC on here. All right, so uh, just to help keep this thing on, I'm gonna go ahead and just put a, one of these little tiny M2 M2 nuts on here just to keep the ESC flat while we're doing our soldering. Because these M2 hardware is so flimsy. I wish people would stop using M2. Oh, another thing, I tried on one of my ESCs to um, enlarge the hole. Where is it? I tried on this ESC and I, I, I got a Dremel and I enlarged the M2 holes to M3. But I guess when you do that, it exposes the layers on the on the PCB, and since, and then since if you if you run a uh, metal screw through here, you'll get little sparks and stuff because I guess you're shorting the the board. Um, if you're gonna enlarge it, you have to use nylon um, screws, which kind of is a pain in the ass. All right, so once you get that on, you can go ahead and start soldering on your motor wires. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pre tin the ESC. Even though it has the solder on there already, I want a little bit more because it seems like the solder that they use at the factory is always really stubborn. I find that it's a lot easier to solder if you add your own solder. So once you get your motors mounted on your ESC, this is what it looks like. So the key to getting your, or protecting your motor wires from getting cut is just to keep them flat on the arm. If you keep them flat on the arm, there's very little chance that the motors will, the, the props will cut your wires. Um, so you really don't need any of that race wire stuff. I've been doing this for the past two years and I've never cut a motor wire. So I just grab some electrical tape and then just hold down the, the wire just make sure it's flat and then just wrap it with some tape and then the key is to get it flat because you don't want any wires sticking up because if you have wires sticking up it'll get cut but if it's flat on the arms there's very little chance of uh, it getting cut it's simple I used to use a uh, heat shrink and then um, some of that uh, motor mesh stuff but that stuff gets really messy when it gets cut and then the heat shrink looks nice, but it is, it's a pain in the ass to get it on. Uh, if you break an arm and you need to swap, um, using tape is so much easier. All right, so next we're gonna prepare the ESC to be mounted. So first, um, since I'm swapping out the, the factory um, VTX for the uh, V3, we're just gonna go ahead and keep the um, the female header pins on here just in case we do need a backup VTX you can just pop this right in there and then connect your um, the pigtail and you're ready to go so if you remove this then you kind of lose that lose the uh, the option of using this VTX so we're just gonna mount the wire on here in a way where you can use two VTX in case your Unify burns out or whatever you have a spare that you can just plug right in so what I do is I just um, solder the when you're holding this um, don't do it too tight because then you might rip the buzzer off so it's just enough for you to solder um, what I do is I just go ahead and solder on the connector on the unify on the bottom of this so that way you can use both uh, VTX all right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and solder on the pin. So the first pin will be TX6, which is for Smart Audio. 
next one is video and then 5 volt and then ground is last oops so too wiggly all right so this is what it looks like you got where's my okay so the white wire is the smart audio wire this is a unify plug goes into tx6 next is video 5 volt and then ground that way you have access to your Unify and the stock VTX. And then next we're going to install or solder on the, um, the crossfire wires. Alright, so first just go ahead and pre-tin your leads again. Alright, so the white wire is the, well I'm going to go opposite way. The black wire is ground, goes on the left. And then power. And S bus. All right. So once that's done, this is what it looks like. All right. So this is my crossfire wire. I got the S bus on the left, power in the middle, and then ground on the right. And then this one just flips over like that. So before we mount the the flight controller on, we're gonna put on the battery cable. So I'm just gonna go ahead and prepare this wire. Oops, I'm gonna cut it first. Use my little Weeha wire strippers and then just cut a little chunk off. So even though the Emacs has two built-in caps on the ESC, I'm just gonna add an extra one because I've been doing this on all my builds. Um, it really doesn't take much extra work and um, it's really easy. I'll show you the way I do it. So I'm going to go ahead and pre tin my wires. And then pre tin the XT60. Once I got this on there, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to mount the cap. So on the cap, you just want to make sure that you have the, the polarity on the right one because if you don't, the cap will uh, explode <laughs> and you don't want that. So my, le my negative is on this side, so I'm going to put the negative leave on this side. Just kind of bend it and then just chop off what I don't need. I'm just going to tin the leads on the cap and then put some solder on the outside of the XT60. Kind of like this. And then I'll put my cap on here and then just solder it right on. So this is what it looks like. So soldering on a cap right at the XT60 is exactly the same as if you soldered a cap onto the ESC. They're both connection points and it doesn't really matter where you have it. But I like doing it this way because then you don't have to find a way to mount a giant cap somewhere in your, in your quad. Especially if you're running a small stack, 
like the 20 by 20 the space is already very limited so just move the cap outside of the frame just put some more solder on this sucker There you go. Real nice and neat, nice and clean solder joint. All right, so once you got the battery lead on here, I'll just go ahead and put a big heat shrink over the wire or the, um, the cap in the connector. And then just heat shrink it on. I don't worry about the inside of the XT60 because the way the XT60 is, in order for the short to actually occur, these two metal parts have to bend in and the only way it would bend in is if the whole housing of the XT60 melted somehow. Um, I've never had that happen so I'm not going to worry about it. Alright, so now we can mount on the flight controller. I never really use standoff anymore. I just use these butter mounts because I can adjust the height of um, however high I want it. So I just put these on here and then put the um, flight controller over. So as you can see, the this side of the screws is shorter and I'll show you why I do that. So because we're using the Unify V3, the, the VTX is actually a little bit bigger than the 20x20 20 20, uh, area. So on the right side, we're just going to put on these little M2, M2 lock nuts that will come with a kit if, you, uh, if you're building from the kit. You don't have to tighten it down super tight, just enough so where the stack is not wiggling all over the place. Alright, so once you have the stack, it looks like that. Alright, so next we'll mount the VTX onto the frame. Uh, I'm just going to use this little 20x20 20 20 VTX carbon fiber plate that I made. Um, go ahead and get some double sided tape and just, just put it on the bottom of your VTX. So as you can see, the, the TBS Unify is just slightly bigger than a 20x20 20 20 stack. That's why I only mount um, half of the screws on this side. Because if you do it flat like that, the screws will stick up and you can't mount your, your plate flat on the board. Go ahead and remove the little sticker that's on the buzzer. And then I'm going to use the, the little blue double sided tape that came with the Unify. And cut a little tiny piece and we'll put it on part of the buzzer like that. We'll see why in a little bit. Move the backing and then I'm gonna go ahead and put another butter mount right here for the stack. And then actually one butter mount is not quite big enough so I'm going to I got these butter mounts that I cut in half like this. So it's just a regular butter mount that I use some pliers and I cut them in I cut them in half and then put these on top of the stack. So this stack is actually a butter mount and a half. And then just take your VTX plate and put it right on top of the stack. Alright, so this is what it looks like when you're done. You got a little one and a half butter mount here on the lock nut. And then your plate will sit like that. And the other side that doesn't have the, 
the screws, it's, it's being held on by this little double-sided tape. So now you have a little flat surface big enough for your um, Unify 3. Take the sticky backing off. And then you're just going to tape it a little bit offset. And then your VTX will plug in just like that. So now you have a nice neat little stack right here. Hardly any wire showing. Alright, so next we're going to mount the canopy. So the canopy, the design that the, uh, the Mayday FPV made is really good. I like how they designed it to where it uses these little 10 millimeter standoffs that go into the canopy. And I haven't had a single issue or had a single complaint of someone ripping off these canopies, meaning getting knocked off. Alright, so get your camera and then just put it into the canopy. I'm just using the screws that came with the, the Fox here arrow. Alright, and then put the standoffs. On the back of the frame. Screw like that. And then put your antenna mount on the back. Oops. I used to mount these upside down, but now with the fin, I can put them right side up. I just realized we haven't even mounted on the camera cable. Stupid. Big mistake. <laughs> so I just realized I didn't even put on the camera cable before I put the VTX plate on. So I just took the VTX plate off and then I'm going to install the camera cable. So just pretend your leads as usual. That's ground. 5 volt video. Oops. Why so tiny? And then video. All right, so I just soldered on the camera cable. Now we can mount the canopy onto the frame. So I'll just go ahead and plug in your camera. I really like the the design that he made on this canopy because there are some other canopies that have the VTX and antenna holders on the canopy but those look nice but really it's a pain in the butt if you're trying to fix it because if the antenna and everything is mounted on the canopy every time you take off the canopy you have to undo the VTX um, the SMA and unthread the um, the RX antennas. With this one, all you do is unplug the, the camera and the canopy comes off. So just keep that in mind if you're uh, looking for a new canopy on your quad. Get one with the SMA and VTX um, connector that's on the frame separate from the, the canopy. Alright, so as you can see, once we have that mounted, the build is pretty much done. Um, as you can see, using the Emacs uh, Mini Mag 2 is really simple. Once you have all the wires cut, you just solder everything together and that's it. You don't have to worry about individual ESC signal wires going to the flight controller and all that. It's all connected. Um, one thing I forgot to do again is, um, where is it? connect this little cable from the ESC to the flight controller but it's a very simple fix just take off your canopy and just plug it right in um, ESC to flight controller so stupid <laughs> but anyways you can see build is done um, check back next week when I do the beta flight settings and uh, show you how to set up the camera for night flying and then do some um, flight footage so if you have any questions just put them in the comments below and I'll answer them as quickly as I can or actually um, put the qu 
uh, put the questions on the website because I check that way more often than I do um, YouTube. So hope you found this video helpful and thanks for watching and uh, please don't forget to subscribe.